are four points that we look at on the jury and are kind of the essence of the CECP, what we look at in terms of what is effective philanthropy. We look at CEO leadership, we look at innovation, we look at measurement, and we look at partnership. We were not expecting that communication would take so much time, and still does. As a matter of fact, as the program becomes more robust, we're finding that we almost need a full-time external communicator and almost need a full-time internal communicator. Because if you're really rolling out your program, what good does it do if you don't tell your own employees the good that you're doing? LiquidNet is really trying to be a different kind of Wall Street firm for a different kind of era. And our founder, Seth Merrick, who spoke last night, has really given life to this program. And he's very passionate about social engagement and about the potential of one, which is kind of our motto, and that's almost our mantra, the potential of one and the impact of many. So what we're trying to do with our communications, both internally and externally, is to reinforce the concept that each one of us can make a difference. And so we're trying to demonstrate that, that we can be successful as a business while having a significant social impact. It's obvious that the Boys and Girls Club and the Charles Schwab Foundation have built an incredible partnership. How does the Boys and Girls Club and how do the Charles Schwab Foundation, how do each of your organizations talk about it? Now our agenda is impact, and financial literacy is a significant part of that. And the movement is galvanizing around impact, education, financial literacy. So I think we have a context, and it's always important for us to put our programs and our partnerships in the context of mission. Why are we doing this? We want to bring about change. That resonates with our people, whether they're board members, whether they're professionals, whether they're program volunteers. In this case, the partner is coming to us for our expertise in youth development, but they are bringing their expertise in financial literacy. So it's really you know, kind of a meshing and a very, um, I think, significant um, a difference in a lot of our partnerships. We've got the expertise of a corporation now to help us, and that's in their DNA. My, you know, my father founded the company about 35 years ago, and he did not like the way Wall Street you know, treated individual Americans. And so from the day he opened the doors in the 70s, we as a company have been extreme, all my colleagues have been extremely passionate about democratizing investing and breaking down barriers so more people can participate in our economic system. So I felt that by bringing this passion with, you know, and, and to our philanthropy, we would have you know, great success. Getting key executives involved was always very important to me. Getting, you know, that's the way to get them involved and get, you get more buy-in. And financial literacy now is part of our vocabulary. You hear every department within Schwab talking about it. So much so that our brand department, if anybody's in marketing, you know, we have a brand architecture. It's basically guidelines for how you can communicate your business. And we have four pillars, you know, each, each main business. Well, the fourth business is our community services on behalf of financial literacy. And we've done a lot of work to engage people throughout the organization in the work of our social engagement, to get people to buy into it, to understand it, to embrace it, and also to feel connected to it themselves. 98% approve, and very strongly approve, and embrace what we're doing. Uh, you might have a few holdouts, but those are the outliers. But yeah, this is something that, when done right, when done effectively, uh, yes, it requires leadership and CEO vision, but when done right and done effectively, it's something that everybody throughout the organization embraces and can be proud of 